right, I think everybody's got their audio sorted here. Let's see, good, great. Uh, hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are super excited that you are able to be here. Uh, my name is Haley Seppa. I work with the CSU Entertainment Alliance. And if you don't know about us, um, I will post a link in the chat in a little bit about what we do. But generally, we are here as a resource hub for you all, for all CSUs across the system. Um, we work on providing opportunities and education and um, job postings, things like that for you all to be able to um, get your foot in the door of the entertainment industry. One of those things that we're doing is partnering with Staff Me Up, who has joined us today that we're very excited about. They have a very um, uh, comprehensive platform for behind the camera jobs. Um, and I will kick it over the, to them to introduce themselves. Um, thank you for being here. And um, here we go. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Haley. And thank you, everyone, for being here and having us here today. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Nicole, and I'm from Staff Me Up. And if you haven't heard of Staff Me Up yet, we are essentially the LinkedIn for the media and entertainment industry. Um, we are where you can find jobs as well as find crew members for your next project. Um, and you can really think of us as like your online resume. So just like LinkedIn, where you can um, put in all your experience, any accolades where you went to school and you can like network people and search people on there. That's exactly what Staff Me Up is doing as well, but specifically within entertainment. And um, we've been around since 2003. And so we have lots of people on there to network with anyone from a PA all the way up to showrunner. Um, and before I go any further, I do wanna just give Daniel Rosenberg a chance to introduce himself as well. Hi everyone, Daniel with Staff Me Up as well. We're really, really excited to be here. Um, as I'm talking, I'm also admitting people into the room. So I'm happy whoever's just joining now, uh, welcome. Um, like Nicole mentioned, LinkedIn is, is the best way that we can give you an example about what we're all about, but we're really bespoke for the TV and digital production community. Um, so this is what people use to hire staff, check you out, whether you apply to a job or someone's proactively looking for, for people with your skill set and professional background, um, you know, we, we have you covered. So looking forward to answering questions, walking you through the platform. Um, and thanks for having us. Thanks for being here. Awesome. Yeah. And so as we mentioned, we're going to go a little bit through the platform, show you how to set up your profile, how to look for jobs, um, how to best put yourself forward for jobs and really um, leverage the platform in the best way that you can so that you can really get that next job for yourself. Um, and as I'm going through it, I'll share a little bit about myself as well. Um, and so as I'm pulling it up, so, oh, as I mentioned, we've been around since 2000. Free. And let me know if you can see my screen. It should say Diversity and Inclusion Initiative. Awesome. Thank you. Um, but about two years ago now, we started our Diversity and Inclusion Initiative, and we officially launched last year. Um, and really, our goal here is to help reduce exclusion by familiarity. As we've all heard many times, it's all about who you know within the industry. Um, and sometimes if you're going within that same circle of people, you're not really being inclusive within that same circle of people, um, especially you know, if you're gonna hire that same PA that you love and know all the time. And so we're working with over 30 different diversity advocacy organizations that you can see here. Um, and please, I encourage you all to check them out. If there are any that speak to you and that resonate with you, um, please join them, become a member. Um, they're all really great organizations doing work from the ground up, you know, from Black and Film, Alliance of Women Directors, Who You Know, which is, um, a cohort of over 15,000 BIPOC creators within the industry. Um, and they have a Facebook group, Instagram, where they do virtual talks as well. They are amazing. Um, we're really working with these um, diversity advocacy organizations along with various production companies to help them be inclusive, to take that action, right? To take the pledge to post all their available job positions and um, interview at least five people from historically underrepresented backgrounds. And they're doing this while using our site and using the functionality that we have on here, as well as participating in our virtual events, just like the one that we're doing today. Um, and so that's a little bit about what we're doing. And, you know, it says it's an initiative, but it's really just become who we are and what our mission is. And now I'm going to show you a little bit on the profile side. Um, and so this is what your profile looks like, so very similar to LinkedIn, as you keep saying. Um, and I'm just kind of going to dive right in 
and show you just all the various different parts and the parts that I think are really important uh, that you have completed and filled out. And so the first one is this top portion here. Obviously put in a picture if you feel comfortable as well as your title. So when I have my primary position as my production manager title, this is the title that you wanna put in for any work that you want, right? So if you haven't still had that first PA job or that first assistant camera job, but that's what you want, that's what I would put in this primary position field, as well as um, your availability to work. So you can put your currently available to work. If you wanna wait till after the school year's done, you can put that you'll be available after you know May 23rd or whatever the date is as well as your location. So for me, um, I'm originally from Chicago. I um, have worked in production management for about the past eight years. I moved to LA seven years ago and um, you know worked my way up as a PA all the way up to a line producer. So oftentimes I'm using Staff Me Up not just to get my own jobs, but to also look for crew members. And one of the main things that for me, I need to know is where you, where you are located. So, you know, if I'm doing a shoot in Holyoke, Massachusetts, I, if I come near Staff Me Up profile, I want to see that you are local to the position uh, if that's a requirement for me. And so you always want to make sure your location is shown. And um, one thing I want to make sure that you see is in settings, because you can change all your settings of what, you know, can be viewed and what cannot be. Um, but you want to make sure you select, I want my location to be visible on my profile page. Um, I don't believe this is a default, so this you need to make sure you go into your settings to check that. And so moving a little bit forward, um, this is where you have your summary, right? So you can add in your resume, your phone number, um, as well as your LinkedIn and IMDb pages. They can all be linked here, as well as if you have a website, if you have a Vimeo or YouTube channel, say you're an editor and you have your reel that you want to showcase, you can put that all here, as well as an about me section. And this is really like your 60 second elevator pitch, put what your passions are, what the next role that you want to be in and what you currently, what experience you currently have. So if you're an editor and you have, you know, five years of Adobe Premiere experience, this is definitely where you want to put this because it'll be like one of the first things that employers see when they're looking at your profile. And then the meat of everything, right, is your credits. Um, and when we say credits, they don't even have to be for projects that have aired anywhere or gone anywhere. This is includes any student projects you do, any passion projects that you've done on the side to help a friend out or even your own passion projects. You can put that all here. Um, and so I'm just gonna go through it really quick just so you can kind of see what it looks like to add in credits. I'm just gonna add in production assistant. And say you were the lead or the night PA, you can put that information here as well. And then you want to say well, we have production. a question in the chat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody's asking, what about writers? Is this mostly for production jobs? This is currently mostly for below the line production jobs, as well as a few above the line. So producers, showrunners, um, you know, and we don't necessarily get a lot of volume when it comes to writing, but I would still very much recommend, you know, having this presence on here to create a profile and have it on here is free. Um, and like I said, many uh, producers, and myself use this as a way to validate credits and to see what you know, see what you worked on. And also, just to jump in, you know, the way that writers uh, submit their work and uh, get hired and join writers' rooms is different than the way that below the line production crew gets hired. However, um, a lot of early positions as producers working in the producers department and the creative department involve being on teams with writers, and so. Um, this is definitely a place to have a profile if you're an aspiring writer or a current writer. Um, and th there are opportunities for writers that do go out occasionally. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Um, and so production assistant, as we're going through create, um, putting in credits, also, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to continue putting them in the chat. And so say you're putting in a production assistant position and it was for a short film that you helped your friend out and it was just, you know, um, it was a passion project that you helped them out with, but it didn't necessarily go anywhere. Um, you can type that in. So let's just say untitled film. You don't have to select this if you want, but if you know if you put it into film festivals, that's awesome and amazing. You can put that here as well. And then your start date. Um, it's just an approximate the month and the year end date, or if you currently still work there, you can put that in as well. And then include um, you know what the theme is. If it was a horror film, it was a thriller. You can put that all here as well as describe your responsibilities and hit save. 
and that will show up. Your most recent one will show up at the top of your profile. Um, I didn't include a date, so it didn't add. But um, one other one that I just want to show is specifically for internships. So say you were an intern somewhere, and obviously this wasn't for, let's say this wasn't for a specific film, right? But it was for a company. Then you would select, this was a staff position. And then again, select your start and end date where the internship was, description and responsibilities. And this is a way to help, um, you know, if there wasn't a specific project that you worked on, you worked on many at one company, this is a way to bypass um, trying to type in the type of film or the name of the film. And so you can see, um, like I said, all credits count. If you go down to mine, you know, I was very much into film festivals and music festivals early on in my career. And I still included all of those, even though they're not necessarily within the TV realm, but they still help you to populate as employers are looking at your profile, as you're applying to different jobs. If you have a certain number of those credits, it'll help you um, surface higher when they're searching. And then we have our affiliations part. And this is where if you've used the CSUEA registration link, this is where your CSUEA um, affiliation would come up. And so this is also where you can add any other one. So you can see I have my alumni, DePaul University, and then I also have Brown Girls Doc Mafia that I'm a part of Women in Animation, he, you know. And so this is where you can put any organizations or affiliations that you have. If you are a part of a union, um, you can add that in here as well. And so let's, and let's say you already have a profile. You can then also still add in CSUEA, just type it into this field and it'll automatically add it into your profile. And again, for any editors, animators, storyboard artists, this is where you would showcase um, your, your physical visuals, right? And so you can use this to add in any YouTube or Vimeo videos that you have, and you can showcase that here for the employers to see. I'm scrolling down just a little bit. Uh, these two are especially important if you're still starting off in your career or if you're a camera operator or an audio supervisor and you have your own gear that you're willing to lend out. You can type that in here. So if you have like a C3 Mark, C300 Mark II, put that in here so that anyone who's looking for an AC or camera operator that has their own gear, they'll know that you also have that, that you can provide. And then again, skills. So anything that you're learning in your classes, you know, movie magic budgeting, Premiere, Avid, you really want to showcase that here as well. Um, and that's it for your profile. And so this is what you would see for employers to see as they're looking and searching our database. Um, you know, for me, I've also gotten staff me up profiles as resumes when I'm hiring. So if I ask someone for the list of credits, they will come to staff me up, download their profile as a PDF and send that to me. And that's perfectly fine. And that's like the great, the best way for me to get um, a picture of what it is that they've done and what their experience is. Um, and is there any questions? And Danny, is there anything I missed that you want to add in? about? No, you covered everything. I mean, obviously, we'll, we'll touch on work alerts and, and what it looks like to serve, search for jobs in a second. But there are a few questions that have come in. Um, so the first was, um, do we offer resume building or scrutinizing in your organization? Um, so I'll, I'll answer that question. Um, it isn't an official service that we currently um, offer, but um, for, uh, for all of you, we, we will be able to put you in touch with someone on our team who can help you make sure that you're putting your best foot forward. Um, so that includes getting your profile set up, um, answering any questions. Um, so, so we've got you covered. Um, there's also a question here about, um, will the recording be posted on a website? Um, I believe yes, right? Haley? Okay. Yes, that's correct. On our events page on our site. I typed the, the link in a little bit lower so people can have access to that as well. Okay, great. There's nothing like the live experience, but you will be able to check this out later if you have to, if you have to jump. And um, I don't, another question is I don't have a lot of production related experience besides one internship and a college degree. I have plenty of business experience. So how can I make myself stand out? Um, Nicole and I always say, um, a credit can be your participation in a student film, a project that you did, your education and your certification absolutely hold weight on this profile. Um, so uh, just be authentic about the experience that you have to date. And then also be really clear, like Nicole alluded to earlier, be clear in your bio to state what you're passionate about and what you want to do, right? So when someone's hiring you or someone's looking at your profile to hire you, they not only see the experience that you bring to the table, but what you're passionate about doing. And those two things get married in the equation. Um, 
There's another question here. Okay, there are a bunch of questions. So maybe we'll do one more and then Nicole, you'll keep going. Yeah, sounds good. Um, okay, uh, let's see. What would you recommend to students who went back to college to become working producers on set or, or building personal crews? Um, Nicole, do you wanna take that one? Yeah, I mean, definitely networking, being on this site and even networking within Staff Me Up is key. Um, and just as you are going onto sets, if you're getting an internship, you're getting, um, you know, if you're even able to shadow someone that's currently working, that is fantastic and amazing. I think, and again, like you can highlight that in your bio, you know, you say, I have four years, you know, for instance, in marketing, um, but I'm looking to get into the entertainment industry. I really found that um, camera is my passion and that's really where I want to go. Um, like Danny said, like, just be authentic in that and, and, you know, your experience, whatever it is outside of TV will definitely shine through and make you an asset on set, um, regardless of whether it, your previous experience was in TV or not. Um, and I hope that answered your question a little bit more. Um, and just so everyone can kind of prorate their time, the, the demo with the, and showing the platform, I'll probably only take about 10 or so more minutes. And then afterwards, uh, we'll definitely open it up to questions again. And then you can raise your hand and come on camera and ask us questions as well. Thank you, Nicole. Yeah, of course, thank you. Um, and so now I'm just gonna show you the side of how you look for a job. And so we're gonna go in the top left corner here. You can see it says hire or work. So hire is where you would go if you're looking to crew people up and hire people. Um, work is where you would go looking for jobs. And so I'm gonna click on work, find work, and then I'm gonna search jobs. So let's say you're looking for an assistant camera position in, let's just say, Los Angeles. What's happening? There it goes. Obviously, we're still in COVID, um, so things are are um, aren't happening as. Uh, widely as they used to, but you can see there's an assistant camera position in Highland, California that they're looking for. It starts March 8th for five days. If you click show details, it's going to tell you the title of, of the show, the company that it's for, um, and the job requirements, right? So if it's that you must have two credits, previous credits as an AC, this one is that you must be willing to look, work as a local. And so working as a local, in case anyone doesn't know, that means that they don't have to pay for any travel accommodations for you, right? Say you are um, in Las Vegas, but you can work in Highland, California as a local. That means you're able to get yourself there, provide your accommodations, and um, essentially that you are staying there as if you were to live there and the production doesn't have to pay for anything on that end. And then you can say they need an AC for five days starting on March 8th. And then you can click apply now. And you have the job requirements again, as well as this area where you can choose credits to highlight. So say um, you were a camera PA or an AC on other shows or student projects, you can highlight those credits here just by selecting them. And then I will show you simultaneously in a second on the employer side, what it looks like when you highlight those credits for them. And then quick pitch, how do these credits show that you are right for the job? And so in this section, you really wanna that you have a hundred characters, right? To say um, as much as you can with as little uh, amount of words as you can. And this is where you really wanna pay attention to any descriptors that they have in their title. Obviously this is a very short description, but you can say um, highly experienced AC. I've, been, I've worked on three different jobs and I'm willing to work as a local in Highland, California. Or you can say, you know, definitely if you're an AC, you wanna say what experience with cameras you have. You know, I have experience working with Sony FS7, C300s, and putting that here um, and say, obviously if it's for an AC position, saying that you're highly motivated, you know how to put cameras together, you're organized. That's something that you would all put in this quick pitch. And then as well for anyone here, um, if you want to, so everything that I've shown you so far is part of your free profile. And if anyone wants to have a premium profile, please reach out to us and we will, take care of you and make sure you're taken care of to have a, you know, a promotion to have that premium profile for a while. Um, and this is where you can have, uh, where you have the ability to promote your application. So as you can see in this little screenshot here, that just means there's an orange box around your profile and that doesn't put you any higher or lower, 
you know, depending on your experience, you're still going to rank where the algorithm takes you, but it'll at least highlight you a little bit more to the employer. And then in addition, um, and this is kind of where, you know, if you have experience outside and you don't necessarily have uh, TV credits that you want to put into the pro um, into your profile, you can still upload your resume so they can see all your experience that you've had, as well as a cover letter. Um, and just a quick tip about cover letters and resumes, you always want to make sure that you're personalizing them per that job, right? So if you're putting in a cover letter, you know that it's for ITV America, maybe this time, you know, say, you know, hi there, I'm highly interested in the AC position for maybe this time at ITV America. I really love, you know, XYZ shows that you also other that you also produce. Um, and really, so making sure that it's personal, knowing, telling the employer that you've read the job requirements, you know what you're applying for, and they know that you're not just, you know, haphazardly applying to a bunch of jobs is really important to help you stand out as well. And then you would just apply. Daniel, is there anything else that you want to add from this page? No, I mean, that, that, that says it all. I, I guess one more thing about the cover letter is even to just do a cover letter shows that, you know, you really do care about the position you're applying for. Right. And, and also punctuation and spelling and grammar is key, you know, um, that that still matters. People want to know that you've taken the time to be serious about putting yourself forward. Yeah. And as you can see here, you can also save them. Right. So you can see I even have a production coordinator specifically for Viacom. I have a BET cover letters. And so there are, you can save them as well. And you can kind of use them as a template. So you don't always have to completely type out your cover letter each time. You can at least tweak current ones. And so really quick, I'm going to show you, um, before I have to show you what it looks like on the employer side, I'm just going to show you what our work alerts look like. And so work alerts, essentially, you can create them for any position or department that you're interested in. And anytime a job is posted with that title or from that department, you will either get a text or an email, depending on what your communication settings are. So let's say I want to create a new work alert. Um, I want to look for a production assistant position. And let's just say, because I'm from Chicago and I want to give something outside of LA, let's just say Chicago. And for anyone just starting off, I highly recommend you still keep this low budget portion here just so you can have more opportunities coming to you. And you can see, I also want to receive work alerts for positions that are similar to this one. So this will give me a work alert currently for any jobs that are for a PA within 100 miles of Chicago. And then if I want to receive positions that are similar, it might also give me assistant production office coordinator or something like that. And they will provide me those as well. Now just hit save. And then any work alerts that you have will also show up in this upper left hand corner where it says uh, work alerts. And then you can also choose uh, work alerts that are exclusive jobs on staff me up. So that means someone like a physical person has literally gone into staff me up and typed in that job posting or from our partners, which would be from, you know, any other third party site. And that, these are work alerts. Highly recommend that you set these up. These are extremely important. And you know, if you get a work alert and you apply right away, um, that'll also, you know, the quicker you can apply, the the more likely the employer is to see that as well. And so I'm just going to hop back on to now what it looks like on the employer side. Danny, was there something you wanted to say? I I was just going to say that um, you know, for those of you on on the call that have done your own staffing for a project. Um, you, you know, how, um, how quickly you need to hire people sometimes, you know, sometimes a new location gets added, uh, for tomorrow and it's 10 PM and you don't know anyone that lives in that area. What do you do? Um, and so it's not just about putting the word out there and saying, I need to hire someone who has this skill set or this level of experience to work tomorrow. It's also about waiting for people to say, I'm interested, I'm available. And then being able to review them digitally. Um, and, and that's really part of the problem of staffing that we try to solve for. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so I'm just going to hop on to the employer side. So this is the same position, assistant camera in Highland, California. This is what it looks like to them, right? So you can see Aaron, he highlighted himself. He's one of his promotional tokens. Um, and you only get two a month so that, so this employer knows that he used one of his two tokens because he really wants this job to highlight and promote himself. Um, and then you can also see here, these are like the three credits, right, that you chose to highlight. And this is what Emerson chose. And then, um, you know, it gives them a brief overview. You know, Emerson has 28 assistant camera credits, 29 additional camp credits in the camera department, and two credits in similar positions. So right away, I feel like Emerson is very qualified for this position, right? 
and again, you can see more people promoted themselves. And just really quickly, so you can see as part of our diversity inclusion initiative that we spoke about earlier, um, employees are also able to filter by anyone who's part of a specific racial or ethnic group, as well as someone who identifies as a woman. And soon we'll also be rolling out LGBTQ plus people with disabilities and veterans. Um, we're gonna have a section coming out shortly in your profile that allows you to identify yourself um, as part of a historically underrepresented group. So for myself, you know, I would, you know, label that I'm a part of the LGBT community. I'm an Asian American. Um, and then, you know, there's also sections there if you have disabilities or if you're a veteran to select that as well. And that'll help you surface within these filters too. And then employees can also invite to apply. And so when we're saying, you know, it's important just for you to be on the platform, whether you are actively searching for work or not, this is one of the reasons why. It's because then if they are still looking for an assistant camera in Highland, California, and they want to invite you to apply, but you haven't already applied, you will surface in the this, in this search so that you are still visible to that employer. And so, you know, say I want to invite to apply Tiffany Murray to this. She's been an, an AC in advertising, a camera operator for a Disney Plus show, like amazing. Um, I would invite her to apply, even though she might not have seen this position or she might not be available, but at least I still know about her and I can even add her to my own contact list for future reference. So this is part of the reason why it's still just important to have that online presence with Staff Me Up. And then just one more quick thing um, that also shows why it's important. So this is what we call our power search. So you can see we have over 350,000 users on our platform. Like I mentioned before, we were created in 2003. So many people who started on our platform as PAs are now showrunners and they're still using this to look up your credits and to, and to find new people, right? And so, you know, again, say, I just, you know, I just want to add to my network. I want to meet more people. I want to meet more camera operators. Um, and let's just say it's in, you know, Nashville, right? Because many times a lot of people, myself included, line producers are looking for people outside of, you know, the major hubs, outside of Atlanta, New York, LA, Chicago, but it'll be somewhere like Nashville where my network isn't as fast. So I'm going to, you know, go through here um, I'll most likely use the diversity inclusion filter, you know, and I can heart favorite people. I can add them to a list of camera operators in Nashville, Tennessee. I thought, oh yeah, camera operators in Nashville. And then I might message her. I mean, I might message Eric and be like, hey, I'm going to be in Nashville next week, next month, um, looking for a camera operator. Might you be available or interested? Happy to hop on a call, right? And so you know, Erica might not have used Staff Me Up for a while to find a job, but at least she's still on here and she's still visible and discoverable by that employer. And that can bring her in even more jobs than before. Um, and that's, oh wait, there's one more thing, sorry. Da, da, da. That's in here. Another thing, so if you're just starting off, I do wanna point out this passion project section, or if you have your own passion projects that you're looking to crew up or even student projects, you can put that all here. And so these will be more low budget, but they are looking for people, you know, who are still looking for experience that, um, you know, can do a $200 a day job. Um, and, you know, this is where you can put your own projects, like I said, or you, if you are in Houston, Texas, probably not right now, but, um, you know, you can view the project, take a look at what it is. Um, it's still a SAG after a feature film. Here are their dates where they're planning to film. If you're interested, you can come here, um, you know, for first AC, you can see that's hundred dollars a day, but you're really looking to get more experience and you, you know, you still want to apply. Absolutely, you can do that here. Um, you can see there's only seven applicants. So, you know, you're more likely to be seen just because there's not as many people applying to that position as well. Um, and now that is all. Um, I think I went three minutes over the original 10 minutes I said that I was going to try wrapping it up in. But um, if anyone has any questions, please let us know. And Danny, if there's anything else that you want to um, touch on before I stop sharing my screen. No, nothing else. I think we should open it up to questions um, and have a conversation about anything that we just went through. Um, and, and then if we have any time before the end of the session, we can kind of just talk generally about um, networking in the industry as well. So whatever, whatever the group wants to talk about. Um, and maybe this is a good time to um, have some of the people who ask questions in the chat um, turn their camera on and and ask the question for the group and we can we can go there. Haley, yeah. uh, does that sound good? Yeah. Sounds yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, and feel free to just raise your hand and then um, 
Um, hey, Richard. Hi. <laughs> Um, I had a question too. <laughs> Go for it, Haley. Um, I do a lot of acting jobs. Um, that's what most of my resume is, is acting. Um, should I also put that on, on here in experience or just kind of stick to the film production side? Yeah, so um, I would stick to the film production side. Okay. Um, there is a company called Casting Networks. Have you heard of LA Casting or Casting Networks? <laughs> yeah. I ran, um, before Staff Me Up, I ran business development for Casting Networks for many years. And so um, what's cool about Staff Me Up and Casting Networks is they really offer the same thing, um, just one's in front of the camera, one's behind the camera. Okay. Um, so th this definitely put your production foot forward here. Um, uh, that's 100% that of the jobs are for production work. Okay. A great question, I appreciate it. Okay, and the next person we'll have uh, is, I think actually, Daniel, if we can pop over to Richard, because he was- Perfect, yes. Hi, Richard. Hi, thank you for giving me the question. Uh, actually, I was the one who did ask the aspiring producers. Uh, I'm an actor who got into the game late. I was in sales for many, many years. I was uh, a, a district sales manager. I did retail sales. So I jumped into the acting gig and said, you know what, this isn't my place. So I went back to CSUN and got my degree. And what I wanted to do coming out of CSUN was be the person who generates the projects or works with people to personnel their projects. And I've been sort of trying to work my way into that with a couple Emmy winners, which is, you know, this is not necessarily gonna be for me maybe in the short run, but maybe the long run. And I wanted to know what you were doing for people who are looking to hire people. And that's technically what I'm trying to do. I want to be the guy that's coming in and saying, I need this guy and that guy and that guy and that guy. I need you. Uh, and so, yeah, I see that you do have the buttons for the higher side. And that's what I'm going to be looking at. Um, just curious, though, in the long run, if I wanted to be a person who's the mechanic on a project and I wanted to say, listen, I want to be the working producer. Uh, is there a way of doing that on this to get hired on a project here? And I will shut up. Hey, Richard. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, if, if you're saying you want to be the mechanic, like put any, any experience you have within that as part of your credits and experience on your page. And, you know, what I say that people are looking for below the line, we're looking for grips, gaffers, um, A2s, um, anyone who's into graphic design, like we have all of that on our site, you know, for especially big flashy game shows, right? Um, you need all of those things. And, and there are people looking to hire on our site for that and to touch just on what it looks like uh, for the hiring side, as you mentioned, um, you know, we, we have over 3000 media companies using our, our site every day with a hundred jobs posted every day. Um, and so, you know, this is very much the go-to place within uh, media production for people to look for people to hire. Like I said, when I was a line producer, I was on here almost every week, at least looking for people um, from of various positions. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, any other questions? Um, oh, sorry, Haley. Oh, go ahead. No, no, you go. What? Me tell you. Okay, great. Well, first off, uh, Nicole and, and Daniel and Haley, just uh, again, thank you. Um, you know, for taking um time every morning uh, to speak with us, we really appreciate it. And um, I hope I didn't come in a little too late in this, but <clears throat> um, I, I just wanted to ask. Um, well, just uh, two questions. My first question is. Um, is, uh, is Staff Me Up, which is Staff Me Up, um, similar uh, to LinkedIn, where we may be able to network and foster um, relationships with industry professionals and also uh, young um, aspiring professionals. And also, would you also um, recommend or suggest that this, that the Staff Me Up, because um, according to the presentation, um, it's, it's very awesome, would also be um, in line with also with LinkedIn, entertainmentcareers.net and, and, um, and Hollylist, like in that um, spectrum as well in order to uh, find work and also to meet um, different kinds of people in, in, in the um, industry. Yeah, thank you, Nico. Um, I will say yes, LinkedIn is definitely, a, or 
staff camp is definitely like LinkedIn where you can use that to foster relationships with others networks. Um, you know, even if you're just looking to network and you want to use that find crew on the higher tab to look for people to network with that may, you know, work on a show. Cause you can also filter not just by position and location. You can also filter by anyone who's worked on a specific show. And if you want to use that to reach out to message someone and see if they'll, you know, hopefully reply back. And I think a lot of people specifically are during COVID just cause you know, we're all behind our computer screens all day. Um, it's definitely a place where I would recommend doing that and, you know, connect with myself and Daniel, you saw my profile that it's a real life profile on staff me up. That is my actual one. Um, feel free to connect with me on, on that. And, you know, it'll also show as you're looking at people, any mutual connections that we have. And then also um, on staff me up, you can't message someone unless you're connected to that person or unless you're a verified employer or working for a verified employment company. So we do have a couple of walls there, but um, that's not to say that um, you can't use it the same way as LinkedIn. Um, a way that people use staff me up a lot is, you know, when you reach out to someone and you just say, hey, I want to meet you, the person's probably not going to want to meet you coldly, right? But if you reach out to someone, and you're like, look, I noticed that you were a PM on both seasons of this show that I'm super passionate about. Um, I would love to kind of have an informational interview with you and talk more about your experience working on that show. You know, maybe there's a way that we can collaborate or there might be an opportunity for me in the future. It just gives you so much more context and, and such a good reason to reach out to someone, maybe on LinkedIn or you have their email by leveraging the data that we have publicly displayed on Staff Me Up profiles. So um, networking is all what you make of it. And Staff Me Up is an amazing place and a, a trove of data and insight and signal for you to use um, as you network in the industry. Yeah, and Nico, can you, I'm sorry, can you remind us of what your second question was again? Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> good morning. Yeah, of course. Um, well, I just wanted to ask if, because I'm on LinkedIn and Antim Careers and High List almost daily. So would you also recommend if this is also um, another um, subsidiary or just another um, companion piece to have while also uh, searching for roles or just uh, people to um, uh, connect with? Yeah, I'll take that one first. Um, yeah. I always say that any any resource that has been vetted and you know that you've been able to kind of vet by word of mouth, um, you should sign up for and check out and do your research, right? And the resources that are providing you value, um, you should stick with. Um, and I, I don't think there's room for just one resource. I mean, this is a huge industry. You've got your whole career ahead of you. Um, you know, as many resources as you can bring together, uh, it, I, I think I highly recommend that. And then the ones that aren't working, you know, you, you pause for a year, but yeah, yeah. they're, they're all complimentary to each other. I hope that answers yeah, 100 percent of what Daniel said. And then also, like I said, Nico, like take advantage of those work alerts, go through the job board and see what, you know, see what resonates with you and what you might be interested in applying for. And then, um, you know, as you can see on our site, you know, there's, there's lots of different networks that are posting positions on our site, like Hulu, NBC Universal, Disney, ABC, you know, all of that. And so even if any of those resonate with you in terms of where, where the show will be airing, um, keep a lookout for that too. Thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks, Any other questions? Does anyone else want to jump on and ask a question? Feel free to just unmute yourself and uh, and say hello. Well, you know what? Uh, actually, sorry. Um, I do see that there's a question in chat um, from Miss uh, Ria. Ria, um, um, would you mind if I can um, ask that, or did you want to ask that? Yeah, I'll, you know what, I'll go ahead and ask that for the group. I appreciate that, Nico. Um, so is Staff Me Up essentially similar to Stage 32? Um, so Stage 32, um, to the best of my knowledge, is a company where you can go and um, get training um, and get information about a certain position. So I think they produce a lot of content to uh, bring you up to speed with what it's like to be a writer in the industry and and so it's a little bit different. We're, we're definitely complimentary to Sage 32 and we know the people over there. Um, so again, it's another complimentary resource for you to check out. Staff Me Up, we're, we're, you know, if, if you could leave with one takeaway from Staff Me Up, it would be there is no other platform in the industry that has as many freelance production opportunities available for you to put yourself forward for. You know, we're, we're where the jobs are. 
Um, and so even though most jobs still to this day are hired through who you know in personal networks, Staff Me Up complements your networking. Yeah, and I see another uh, question here. It says, would this be use a useful site for executive assistant positions? Um, and I, I definitely still say that, yes, it, we have a few executive assistant positions that go out on our site. Um, and again, it's just important to have um, that online presence within Staff Me Up so someone can see that you are still active in the industry and that you have, you know, a lot of times with executive assistant positions, depending on where you're, where you're looking, um, they also ask for you to have agency experience. So those are still also experiences that I would put on your profile. Um, but in terms of the volume of executive assistant positions, um, I would say, you know, we don't have as many as we would for, you know, the, the you know, an editor, camera operator, production assistant. And it's also, you know, it's good to have an idea of what you want to do, right, or what you want to try out. And if being an executive assistant at a, a certain type of organization is, is where you want to lean into, amazing. But the more, um, the more you can be open to that entry level position or that first or second position, you know, I recommend that because then you go on set or you're working virtually or you go into an office and then you're surrounded by a bunch of new peers that you can network with. Um, you can introduce yourself to people at all different levels of the organization and say, look, I'd really love for my next spot to be an EA role. You know, is there anyone you think I should speak with? And so, um, you know, that's, that how, that's how it plays out. So it's all about getting that first job um, and, and networking when you're there. And then a lot of things will open up. And there's also yeah. a question on here. What's the difference between the free and the paid version? Um, so uh, the free version you have a limit of jobs that you can apply to. So there are five jobs that you can apply to for free. Um, and that free version up until the first five free jobs includes everything like promoting your application and attaching a cover letter, highlighting credits, um, et cetera. Um, the pro version is unlimited job applications and being able to leverage those kind of features. Um, for our partnership, um, we are going to be uh, providing everyone with a promo so you can take advantage of the free service um and you know that's i hope that answers that question that's a pretty direct question yeah so for anyone who wants to take advantage of the the free premium accounts that danny mentioned um feel free to email me my email is nicole at staffmeup.com um and you know even if you have any other questions that you didn't necessarily get to say on on this call um you know happy to take any questions via email as well um and again that's nicole at staffmeup.com Cool. Anyone else feel free to, you know, hop in and unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah actually, um, if, if it's okay with you. So I'm also just um, on, on staff up right now. Um, I guess I made a profile a few months back and I just forgot, forgot about it, but um, I'm just going on, on your profile, Ms. Nicole, and your profile, uh, Mr. Daniel. And I noticed that, I mean, for you, Nicole, you have an option to, <clears throat> to direct message. And then for Daniel, um, it says that, um, well, connections can only be made after making that premium um next step but i'm wondering if there's any way uh, to leave a note um on on someone's page in case like you um want to connect with them because um it's not about well because i've learned that it's about um networking um but sorry um networking from a strategic standpoint so i'm just wondering how to better off say hey so i, I, I like this person's work or i would like to <clears throat> uh, speak to this individual but <clears throat> but not having that bridge of of, of that note per se so is that so are there other like is there are there other options for um well not other options but are there certain i guess um walls built for certain uh for certain uh, people on on staff yet daniel are you able to take that one yeah sorry um for you know before i answer that question um you know good on you nico for having staff me up open during this presentation and really leaning in um that, that just kind of, that just so impresses me. Um, so I just wanted to make that comment. Um, the way that it currently works is um, you can't send someone a message through Staff Me Up unless you're connected with them. So for example, with Nicole and I, I recommend connecting with us on Staff Me Up. And then once we're connected and we approve that, then you can message us. Um, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's similar to LinkedIn. You can't message anyone on LinkedIn, but um, it just works a little bit differently. A lot of people provide their contact info on their profiles on Staff Me Up, 
So you'll be able to find someone's email address or you'll be able to link to their social media, whether it's LinkedIn or Instagram. So you just have to be a little bit more thoughtful about how you get in touch with people. And then um, for people that work at media companies that have access to Staff Me Up, you then are able to message anyone. So um, I think we'll, as we grow as a company, we'll evolve the way that you can leverage our platform for networking and communicating with people. Um, but for now, I, I hope that answers the question. For now, you just have to be a little bit more thoughtful. Um, Oh yeah, it does. And um, it can completely answer the question. And it's funny, um, now there is actually like um, a, a note a feature on yours, which, which is weird because I guess oh, a, few, a few minutes ago there wasn't, but you know, it's gotta be almost um, more um, affiliated with this uh, new platform. But no, I mean, I think this is great. And I really do you know, believe that this is like, well, like, 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 similar, to, like similar to Clubhouse of how everyone should just have it just for the sake of having it and just um, be smarter with their networking. So thank you. Totally. And also we're on Clubhouse from time to time. Um, you know, uh, we're, we're big fans of the platform. Um, and I think, you know, what's great about Clubhouse is you can be as involved as you want to be. You know, you can be a listener, you can raise your hand if you want. Staff Me Up, what I would recommend for everyone here, even if you already have a job, fill out your Staff Me Up profile. Make sure that you're marketing yourself even when you're sleeping. So if someone's using the search, they can discover your profile and they can get in touch if they want. And then just set your work alerts. You know, if you only want a job working as a production coordinator or production manager and you don't want to hear any other noise, set work alerts for PM roles in the city that you live in. And then you don't even have to think about it. You'll get an email when there's a position that fits your criteria and interest. You can click on a link, apply, you're done. So you, you don't have to be checking the job board 20 times a day. You don't have to have staff me up as this other social network that you're on 20 hours a day in order to get a job. It's something that you can kind of just set and forget. And then when you put yourself forward, we try to help you put your best foot forward. No, definitely. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and I'm, I'm actually curious. Um, I do see here that you are, wait, sorry. I'm, before I, I ask, I should probably let someone else ask a question, but. No, go go ahead, Nico. Uh, th thank you. Um, I was curious, uh, right here, um, sorry. <clears throat> you have a blue check that says agency um, re represented and um, and I just found uh, your profile on LinkedIn, so I haven't really got a chance to review it um, thoroughly enough, but I'm just curious, um, what does that mean to be <clears throat> um, represented by an agency? Like, well, because our, is it because you work for Staff Me Up or you were recommended by, by someone else or how does that, like what's the process of, the, of that? I mean, you know, another really, really great question and a question that I will answer and, and I think this will um, I, I think this will make a lot of sense to, to people on this call. So um, when it comes to uh, production positions, most below the line production positions um, really don't require um, an agent to represent them and to help them negotiate a contract. Um, so most of the talent agents that represent crew um, represent directors, showrunners, co-executive producers, um, and people that are um, uh, in those positions. First of all, the amount of money people in those positions make are a lot more. And so there's more room to pay an agent to negotiate a contract. Um, and that's just the current nature of, of being represented. Um, one, of the, one of the things that being represented helps a lot out with is agents can help put you in certain rooms or into certain conversations. Uh, they can kind of help steer your career, help you identify which opportunities are the right ones for you to be taking. And so on Staff Me Up, there are about 10 agencies um, from UTA to APA to Vital Artists Agency that uh, get work alerts from Staff Me Up for positions that they're interested in putting their clients forward for, um, and they have a vehicle on Staff Me Up to do so. So there is a talent agency experience that we didn't demo to you today. So at whatever point in your career you do decide to be represented by an agent, your agent can use Staff Me Up to put you forward for opportunities. Oh, wow, that's pretty um, cool. And something that I'll just have. I say, right, sorry, Nicole. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no worries. Thanks, Nico. Uh, something that I didn't necessarily get a chance to um, to show on screen, but we do have, when you're in the work tab, we do have a negotiate uh, option there. And when you go to negotiate, that'll also show you the the salary ranges for various positions. So, you know, say you're still like not even sure what you want to do, but you're like, oh, I want to know how much like a hair and makeup artist would make. or I want to know how much like, an editor would make at a certain level. You can go there and we'll show you what the average is 
for for that role um, in the certain in a given year and we'll give you a little bit there's some context in there as well um, where you can explore a little bit about you know the different how much each position makes you know, whether it's on a daily or a weekly basis cool um Haley is there anything else that um if there aren't any more questions is there anything else that you want us to touch on no, I think that pretty well covers it. Um, thank you both so much for all of the work that you put into making this happen and for offering this incredible opportunity. Um, if if y'all are interested, please take them up, you know, email Nicole, take them up on this because it's a huge opportunity um, to have that pro account and to get started in this way. So thank you for showing up. Thank you for being here. That's That's all on my end. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for having us. Appreciate it. All right. We'll see you later. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.